Hello everyone. In this video I'm going to show you all how to uh, unwrap the character. So, um, I pretty much do this, I'm going to just show you the fastest way to do this. Um, as we've already covered in 3D Modeling 1, um, cylindrical mapping, uh, you can use all those techniques also. However, I find this to be um, the fastest way to uh, unwrap a character. Um, so, what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch to my panels and go to Saved Layouts and go to Persp UV Editor. I'm sure you all remember how to do that. So, by default, you're going to have this really complicated looking mess of texturing. Uh, or UV maps <clears throat> and a lot of it is just like sections that were sort of modeled in and it kind of created its own UV um, uh, seams and you'll notice a lot of them are where I literally had just like cut in uh, originally like at the elbow um, a lot of these are probably from uh, like a subdivide um, stuff like that so what I'm going to do is I find this to be, especially if you're just learning, uh, possibly like a, an easier way to kind of at least visually see where and what is going on uh, in your shell versus just seeing this big blah mesh, right? So I'm going to just start by showing you holding spacebar and go to UV and then I'm going to go to automatic. So by Running an automatic UV, you'll see it only does, you know, like front, side, back, um, bottom, top, you know, stuff like that. Um, and this is not an ideal way at all to unwrap a character. But <clears throat> for uh, visual reference, uh, at least while you're doing this, you'll be able to sort of tell what's going on in the... Um, uh, UV editor here. So I guess I'll start right down here at the legs because we began modeling the legs first. Um, I'm going to go to face mode and I'm just simply going to and we can try it with symmetry. I know in the past it didn't work but maybe it will here. Um, and another thing is if you want to sort of make it a little bit faster you can try to run a quick grab here and by switching to your perspective view uh, if those uh, bold white lines those seams seem to be distracting for you just press spacebar and go ahead and look but you'll notice right here I've only selected uh, obviously I had the symmetry tool on that's holding control shift and right click and go to symmetry or um, and symmetry or you can do it right up here, Object X. Now, um, you'll see in here that you know it's grabbing around the legs and stuff like that. And if you can work with this, you can go ahead and just kind of finish off uh, some of these sections on where to grab from. And I'm going to leave it up to about this point, probably about the point of the uh, start here of the bottom of the the buttocks here the glutes and that's one of the, the one of the reasons why is because my character uh, in my uh, reference here part of his like little costume gimmick thing it stops right about here so that's another reason why so um, I'm going to start there and then I'm just going to make sure that I've selected every section possible uh, by edge loops and I'd say that's a pretty good start so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to um, hold spacebar and go to UV looking at it roughly from the front hold spacebar and go to UV and I'm going to go to camera based now Ideally, oops, let me switch back. Ideally, um, 
and let's go to tools and move UV shell tool and I'm going to select each one of these and just sort of drag them out of the way for now and in fact I can even highlight all of these and sort of drag these off for now as well so hopefully um, this is going to work pretty well um, but you'll see as it's all one UV shell the red means um, it's sort of like backwards and that's why you have this purplish color because the the normals aren't facing the proper way um, in the UV shell they're all facing towards you right pointing towards you and that's why the back of this is red so we need to basically fix that but the fastest way to do this is I'm gonna switch to my edge mode and then I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna see if I can do this with symmetry on because that would be pretty cool And I'm going to start by going right down this seam. It doesn't have to be at this red line. It just so happens it's, I'm going for like the, the uh, line that's directly in the center on the inner leg. Um, and I'm going to go all the way down. So if yours is projected a little bit differently because you, um, you know, you were at a slightly different angle. And really the angle doesn't matter too much. And I'll show you why here in a second. And if you just run down the leg, and it's actually really good to be able to see those uh, seams with that bold white line because now I know exactly where to stop. So I'm going to try this on and do both of them simultaneously. It may or may not be possible, but we're going to give it a shot. So I'm going to go to tools, or excuse me, I'm going to go to cut, and then I'm going to go to cut. And let's see if it worked. And it looks like it did. Perfect. Um, you used to, have, even though you had symmetry on in previous versions, you would have to do each one individually for whatever reason. Um, it didn't allow you to uh, cut seams on both sides simultaneously, even if it was symmetrical and all that. So that's a really, uh, really awesome that it's working properly. So now um, I'm going to go to Tools and Move UV Shell Tool. I'm going to select the one. And I'm going to turn on under tools and it's going to say show hide UV toolkit so mine's showing and I've just docked it over here so it'll, it'll when you open it it'll look something like this and then if you just go ahead and click and drag it you can dock it off to the side now in here I'm going to just go to unfold this unfold section and I'm just going to click unfold The selected mesh has non-manifold geometry, which needs to be made manifold in order for unfold to run. I'm going to leave it on always show this warning, and that's just so I know that there could be something wrong with the mesh. And I'm going to go ahead and click fix, and I'm going to put always show this warning. I'm going to leave it like that, and I'm going to click fix. And you'll notice it did fix it very, very nicely. Um, it just unfolded it for me perfectly. Um, and it really did a great job. Now before moving on, I want to show you something. And I've shown uh, this in 3D Modeling 1, but just as a reminder, every time you're unwrapping something, it's always good to have the UV checker on. Um, a lot of 3D modelers and artists uh, create their own 3D checker. Um, they have some kind of custom one that they like to use. Um, for this case, we're just going to use the one that's built into the software, holding right click we're going to assign new material and from here we're gonna Lambert's fine and then all the way at the back here Lambert 2 and to uh, you can do an edit delete all by type history here so you kinda get rid of all that information uh, that would you would see here in your inputs um, you also see all that information up here in your attribute editor so once you delete all type by delete all by type history you're gonna get rid of all of that information uh, that could be in here so you uh, but the quickest way to access it if you want to keep some of that information is right click here in the corner and there's gonna be a drop down and just go to your material in this case it's called Lambert 2 because the default material that's gray on this character is called Lambert 1 so on Lambert 2 I'm gonna rename the Lambert to checker material and uh, make sure you use underscores. I believe even if you hit spacebar, it'll create an automatic underscore for you anyway. So let's check it. Okay, 
it seems like it did just so anyway I, I've grown into the habit of just putting the underscore in myself so from here I'm gonna go to color and I'm gonna click this little checker bo uh, checker board box and then I'm going to go to uh, checker right here checker so I'm gonna click on the checker and I just want to show you the start of what this is starting to look like and if I tools move UV shell tool I'm gonna scale all this a little bit bigger just to give you an idea so we can see Did we crash? There it goes. Still running slow. Okay, perfect. It finally kind of caught up with itself. So just to give you an idea, um, if we look at here, um, the checkerboards are obviously a different scale. You'll notice when I look at it just from the front on the one leg, on both legs, it actually looks like a really good, pretty much checkerboard. This one looks almost too flat because it doesn't really wrap around. And that's because we did that camera base where this one sort of wraps around. And as we come around, you'll notice that we get really heavy texture stretching here and then on the back, it's actually reversed on the one leg because it's it's really not displaying it properly, but you can't see that here. You can kind of only tell from the UVs, um, which would definitely cause issues with tons of stuff, um, especially if you're gonna be exporting this for any other 3D software. Um, it may not know how to read that texture better, uh, properly, excuse me. So I wanna show you, on this leg, after we unfolded it, you'll notice we have these nice clean checkers all the way around. You see all this weird texture stretching in here. And then down here, you'll notice we have a nice clean seam. That's that's known as a seam. And the reason I put it on the inside of the leg is because it's typically not shown as much as the outside of the leg. And I like to follow that center point down the middle of the leg, especially for like clothing, you know, seams and jeans or sweatpants or I don't know, whatever kind of cloth, uh, you know, pants or whatever. And um, which in which case really can help you sort of separate and distinguish um, and not make that seem visible at all, uh, especially when you have on the one side, like this will be the one seam and then this side will be where the clothing sort of continues on. So just a heads up, it's a really great place to uh, put your seam. So now I'm going to do the same thing to the other leg. And I'm going to switch over here and I'm going to go tools, move UV shell tool. I'm going to select this leg. And again, under my UV toolkit, I'm going to just click unfold. And there we go. And we have two perfectly unwrapped, unfolded uh, pieces of uh, UV shells. So. Now that we have that taken care of, let's go ahead, switch back to our character. And while I'm at it, since we went from uh, when we were modeling, we went from the legs to the arms, um, let's go ahead and do the arms next. Now this is pretty important to know where to distinguish uh, this particular character in this particular case uh, anyway so if your character has a shirt just right where the seam on the shirt would be where where this seam would be where can I find it well there's a seam right here I don't know if you can see it so well but my fingers running right across it and this would be a great place to um, add uh, start the UV projection from so again just like before we can simply sort of do our best to start at like the wrist, go all the way up to the arm. And then I'm gonna tap five on my keyboard just because it, I find it to be a little bit easier. And that's a really, really clean selection. I don't, that's 
great. Um, and I might even go one more about to here. And that's just so I have this muscle, uh, like the shoulder muscle here, um, included in it. However, I, if I had just a shirt on, I'd probably go to about here because I feel like that's where the, the seam on the shirt would be. But in this case, I'm going to start it. I'm going to uh, end it about here. I could even go one more. Um, I think that's too much. Uh, no, I'm going to go up to that point. I think that'll that'll work pretty well. All right. So in this case, I'm, I'm actually just utilizing, in my particular case, because I'm, my character I, at the moment is not going to have any clothing on. Um, and I do plan on showing you uh, how to uh, add clothing to a character um, in a different way, other than just directly modeling it in. And I'm going to show you that uh, momentarily, but I won't have an official lab on it. So um, it's just like a little trick I'll show you. Um, for future reference and um, you'll definitely uh, be able to take something away from it because it is pretty neat um, but it is extra work so I don't have an official lab on it but um, I will definitely show you how to do it now I've got both of these arms selected just as before I'm just gonna go you know basically roughly from the front view I'm gonna hold spacebar go to UV and then I'm gonna do camera based now I'm going to switch to my UV editor and you're going to notice both of my arms are projected right here. And what we're going to do here is I actually run my seam down the under part of the arm. And if I'm lucky, I think I just did that in one click. Yep. I run it under the under part of the arm because, you know, it's again another spot that's not as visibly noticeable um, because you know your arms are at your side you might have them crossed whatever and then even if they're you know moving um, your body will kind of block some of that uh, information so it's always good to be able to um, hide the seams as best as possible um, so from here what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna go to cut sew and cut and then I'm gonna to go to tools move UV shell tool I'm gonna to select the shoulder or the the one arm under my UV toolkit I'm gonna to click unfold you'll notice I get a net very nice clean unfold and I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side very nice clean unfold and then I'm gonna drag them over here and at the end um, we're going to start to get these. You'll notice these checkers are larger than the checkers down here. And at the end of this, we're going to basically get the checkers to all be about the same size. Um, and the reason the checkers need to be the same size is so that um, the pixel information isn't distorted. So um, if you have one section that has really large UVs in comparison with large UV checkers and the other one has small checkers, the one with the small checkers is going to have a much higher quality um, uh, image uh, information, so it, it it won't be as it won't be stretched or pixelated or anything like that. So, um, just an FYI. So now that I've got that taken care of, we can do the uh, torso, or or we can do the feet. Um, We'll do the torso because that's how we kind of went into this. Now, there's a couple ways to do this. Um, I'm basically going to start this about I'm going to start it here. Oh. And I'm going to switch to this view. And I'm going to press 5 on my keyboard, or 6 actually for the moment, just so I can see where the, and I'm holding shift, and I'm just sort of selecting, the UVs that I need. So 
So the chest. You can't just sort of double click the edge loops, and you can't really run a clean click and drag over it without maybe accidentally selecting some faces. So I just did that one uh, by hand. And then I'll go from about here. And I don't know, something like that for now. And I'm going to take these two off, or three. And I'll start that about there. And there's five, just so I can see it a little bit better. And this section, I'm going to run also again. So if you had like a tank top on or something, this is uh, a great way uh, to do that. And then I'm going to go to uh, UV camera based. And then from here, especially if this character has clothing on, I'm going to start to cut it probably one and two right there and there and then I'll probably go right down the seams on the side Ooh. and I'll if for especially for clothing that's pretty much exactly where I would put it okay and I'm following the seams right down from the previous one so it'll all have that same seam running down and I'm going to go to cut and cut and then I'm going to go to tools and move UV shell tool and select one and unfold and then I'm going to select the other one even though it looks like it's nicely clean unfolded it could probably use improvement click unfold and there we go now you used to have to actually unfold these without that unfold button uh, by hand and it was a pain um, they still actually have the tool in Maya um, and I'll show you how to use it but this is really the fastest way um, I'll show you how to use it on this next section so again on here the body um, I can run Okay, just making sure I select all the proper faces. And now from here, I'm also again going to just run a UV camera based. And then I'm going to go to uh, over here. And I'm going to start to select my seams. So again, going by the previous seam. Ooh. It looks like I've got one more edge to select. So again, UV camera based and then from here I'm going to run it right down this seam these just get a little too tiny so I need to zoom in pretty close on them and I'm gonna go to cut so cut and then also same thing on this side cut so cut and now I'll show you the old way to do it. So I'll start by selecting. Oh, I guess maybe I undid something at some point. Uh, let's guess this one. Yep. Cut, so cut, tools, move the shell tool, unfold, unfold. Okay. So now that I've got, um, Okay, 
So now that I've got the lower part taken care of the lower half I need to also again unfold it and it looks like I'm missing a face so tools so if this happens to you let me show you a quick trick tools move UV shell tool and I gotta find where the face is so it looks like it's on this back section so I'm gonna select my arrow tool right over here in the top left corner I'm gonna hold right click I'm gonna go to face now I'm going to select these faces in the UV shell. You have to do it in that order. Select the arrow tool, right click in the UV editor face, and then highlight. And it looks like I missed two of these faces. So I'm going to hold shift and click on those right there. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to run a UV camera based projection again. So it basically just brings those in. Now let's just say, as a matter of fact, um, you know, at a point where that you've already unfolded it and it's just like oh my god you know it's it feels so overwhelming that you know you made a, a you know such a minor mistake but it can play such a huge factor in it later how can I fix this um, another way you could always try is switch to your edge mode select all of the edges you need and then go to tools and then um, oh, I'm sorry cut and do move and sew and they should they're a little overlapped so this will be a good one to show you uh, the old-fashioned way I guess to um, unfold something so because these two are overlapped already I'm gonna go to tools move UV shell tool and I'm just gonna select that shell all right and I'm gonna put this in the gray section whoops just so we can see it a little bit better now we're not gonna do when you use the unfold tool it just it automatically flips it, it you know unfolds it and does a really great job of doing that however the old-fashioned way wouldn't work that well at all uh, more than likely sometimes you might get luck lucky but that's uh, not often um, so we're gonna go to um, modify and we're gonna go to flip and in case for whatever reason my settings might be different uh, flip horizontal pivot these are the settings so apply and close it's already done so I need to do that actually I could undo it or just do it again and that's modify flip now you're gonna notice I've got some red faces in there and that's because they're just need to be unfolded so if I go to tools and I go to the smooth tool you'll notice I get these two little buttons unfold and relax click on the unfold and drag click hold and drag and it should and just keep doing it and it should start you'll notice it's slightly in, in, in extreme cases um, you might notice a lot of difference but if you keep doing it until it stops then you kinda have an idea of when it's totally unfolded so this is about where it's totally unfolded. Now, I'm going to just show you by clicking this unfold button, it does make it a little bit nicer because it actually makes it more even. Um, and in the past, basically, your job would have been to make sure that the checkers look good. Um, and that's basically how that would go. So just to kind of get the checkers to match approximately the right size. I'll go ahead and do something like that. And then I'm gonna do the same thing here. And I'll try and show you one other tool we've got. We've got, da, 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 da. let's see, go to tools and try the unfold tool here. We zoom in. It's like a brush tool so you can hold B resize and stuff like that and you can just sort of paint on it and it'll just unfold it for you that way um, but really the most ideal way to do this is just click the unfold button and it get the cleanest possible results that way let me go ahead and switch Oop. oops I was <laughs> looking at the screen recording 
Let me go ahead and resize this here. Okay, perfect. And that's about the same size UVs. Okay. So, now that I've got that all taken care of, you'll notice that the chest has much smaller UV squares. Um, and we're going to get this to automatically resize this for us and make all the squares perfectly square. In the past, you'd have to literally do this by hand and eyeball the, the checkers. Now it'll just done. Click of a button, um, which is really, really awesome. Um, so now we're going to go down here to the feet. I feel like this will be the easiest place to do this. Um, and there's two ways to do this. You could start by just doing the bottom of the foot. I'm going to just go and do this all in one shot. I feel like it'll be just a little bit faster. And you'll get the same results when it's dead. No, done anyway. So I'm going to hold space bar. And let me get both the feet in here. I'm gonna hold space bar. And I'm going to do UV camera based. Now, since my character doesn't have... Um, Ooh, let me undo that actually because I have a couple of these faces that I don't want selected. Okay, so UV camera based. So now that I've got this character here, I'm going to, um, and since I have just like regular feet, um, if I had shoes, I might do the UVs a little bit differently based on like the design of the shoe and stuff um, but since I don't I'm just gonna do this and and really this is a great way no matter what um, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna select the bottom of the foot edge loop and I'm gonna go tools or I'm sorry cut and cut the cut so options all used to be under the tools feature so it's just a, a habit and I'm going to go Tools, Move UV Shell Tool, and I'm simply going to grab both of these out of the way. And now I'm going to select one and do Unfold, and I'm going to select the other one and do Unfold. So now I've got the, the soles of the feet um, basically all set and done. Now with the rest of this, with the I'm going to just go to the back heel. Um, I mean, you could go here too, follow this same exact seam. Um, really great option but in this case I feel like I'm gonna go with this spot and I'm gonna go uh, cut sew and cut and then tools uh, tools move UV shell tool select one unfold select the other unfold and now I've got uh, my characters feet all entirely unfolded all right now, I'm going to do uh, the fingers, and I'm going to do the face last because the face does take, um, face is probably the hardest part. So, in here, I'm going to do the fingers, and I can probably do them all at the same time. Perfect. And I'll even grab the thumb. And I think that'll work fine. And from here, I'm just going to do a, excuse me, um, UV camera based. And again, I don't even need to look. Um, you can run the seam down any place you want. In this case, I'll do the interior of the finger. Um, because it is the uh, sort of least shown part. And that's good. And you can really, I'll just keep it on the same side for every finger. And you can do all of these simultaneously as well. And it's really great that the symmetry tool is working properly.
And just because, I'm going to keep it on the same for every finger on the outside. All right. And then on the thumb, I guess I'll go to this point right here. And you know what? I'm even going to do one section in the tip of the finger as well. Um, because I know that it's not going to have a... It'll have a cleaner unfold this way. And I'm going to go cut and cut. And now uh, also tools, move UV shell tool. Let me go ahead and move the shoes or feet out of the way. And I don't... Let's see if I can just unfold all of these simultaneously. And it did. Um, I just need to... Oops. Show you. And you get nice, clean UVs. All right. I'm going to just do all the these ones simultaneously as well. Unfold. And then just sort of shift them off from one another. All right. So that's the fingers. And now let's go ahead and get into the hand. Again, I really do believe that the uh, camera-based uh, projection um, in this particular case, and select in between the fingers as well, is the absolute fastest way to do this. Um, if you know of a faster way, feel free to let me know, but um, I believe this is really the uh, best way to do this. All right. So now that I've got that all taken care of, Uh, I'm going to go to um, UV camera based. And what this is going to do is I'm going to select this entire section on the edge of the hand. In the center, I'm going to select this little edge. And on the back, I might not have to select the, that one, but I'm going to keep this one selected. And now I'm going to go to cut, sew, and cut. And then again, tools, move UV shell tool, un whoop, unfold along or unfold. I'm going to do unfold. And again, same thing over here, unfold. All right. So now we've got the hands done, and the last part we have is the face. Now, um, I'm just going to show you really quickly, I'm going to isolate this. I did create little sockets in here, um, not needed, and in fact, in many, many, many professional models, they aren't there, um, that this is just an open hole. However, if you would like to include it, and I don't believe I had this included in the previous video. Um, just go ahead and select it, hold shift, hold right click, and then go to fill hole, and then go to face, select that face, hold shift, hold right click, and then go to poke face. And that's it. All right, so, Another thing I have on my character that I don't believe I've shown you, you don't need to have it. It's not part of the requirements. And in fact, it's actually really tedious and difficult. So I'm just gonna show you, it's not a requirement, but I did include um, a little pouch for the interior of the mouth. Not a requirement at all. And in fact, you don't need to have it one bit. So don't worry about it. But just to show you, I will have an extra segment um, on my UV shell. So now, um, I know I've got a lot of parts that are, uh, almost the entire character is unfolded except for the face. So I'm going to switch to over here. And really a fast way to do this, if you can distinguish while you're doing it, make sure, there we go. I know that this entire section here 
I'm going to deselect the arrow tool and reselect the arrow tool. And then I'm going to go to face. I know all of this here is going to be my face. And I'm going to switch in here. I'm going to tap 5 on my keyboard. And I'm going to hold shift and I. Because you can isolate just by um, your, not just by object, but also by face, edge, vertices selections. And it's just going to show you the one extra face, uh, edge, um, whatever you have selected uh, at the bottom just to kind of uh, display where it starts and ends kind of thing. However, I know that this entire thing is like so. And what I'm going to do, just as we've been doing the entire time, UV and camera based. And I'm going to also exit isolate mode. And now I've got my character's face here. And a couple things I'm going to do. Now, if you included those little sockets, you're going to have an extra step here. You're going to need to cut this part out. Um, another thing is I'm going to cut directly down the center back part of the head. one too many so I'm gonna go right to there and then you can actually leave the ears in there or you could cut them out I'm gonna try to start with leaving the ears in there um, just to see what happens um, but let's go ahead and start with just this and we're gonna go cut sew and cut and then we're gonna go tools move UV shell tool we're gonna select the face and then we're gonna click unfold and this is a really stereotype generic default way that every type of unwrapped face looks with a texture on it um, one of the parts that I actually had forgotten to uh, cut out is right in here I'm gonna cut this section out And I'm going to do cut, sew, and cut. And I'm going to redo this unfold again. And just so I can see the checkers, I'm going to resize it. Now, there is going to be um, distortion on it. Um, it's going to happen. So like in the, the neck region, You'll notice and then it slowly moves into the face and the square squares in the face become slightly larger. But that's just because there's so much information. But this is a very generic way to unwrap something. And you'll notice we get a lot of weird texture stretching in the ears and stuff, which is why I was talking about un, uh, unwrapping or uh, cutting those out. And in fact, just you can keep them in there. Don't get me wrong. You can. It's totally acceptable. However, I'm going to cut these out. And why? It is there. Okay. Um, okay. And it looks like I got the entire thing. And I'm going to go. Uh, cut so cut and now I'm gonna go tools move UV shell tool I'll select this one move that one away and select this one and move that one out of the way and I'm gonna go unfold and unfold and then I'm gonna select the face again and unfold and now I get a slightly cleaner version tap six on my keyboard and I'm still getting some stretching in here, but um, at a point, there's really not much you can do about it. <clears throat> so you could try to cut another seam in or something, but I personally would just leave it. 
And then the last part I have in here, I should have IRS the eye socket. So I'm so I'll fold those and then let me find out where I have this section. And this section, I'm gonna select my arrow tool, go to edge, and I'm just gonna kinda of look around and see. I feel like the well, I have the tongue underneath, so I'm going to cut underneath the tongue. And I'm going to cut here as well. There we go. And I'm going to do cut, so cut. And then tools, move UV shell tool, and unfold. And then I've got that section of the interior of the mouth also. You could cut it on the interior if you did create that little socket. It's just a bunch of extrudes, but it's a bunch of extra work and it's really tedious because you have to work inside of the model. Um, but anyway, that's how you would go ahead and do that. And now we have our entire character unwrapped. Now once we have this character unwrapped, the last thing we need to do is we need to tools, move UV shell tool, select all of the unwrap, and then we're gonna go to modify and layout, and I'm gonna click the little settings button, and in here, um, you can literally just copy these settings. I have packing resolution 256, that's probably by default. Um, translate shells checked uh, all this stuff you know take a look I don't really mess around with any of this um, texture map size you can adjust it you can make it larger 2048 whatever 4k texture that don't do that it'll probably be too much um, I just keep it at 1024 because um, it won't matter when we bring it into Photoshop and uh, also at the bottom this one is the most important scale mode uniform make sure that says uniform scale mode and then this shell padding and tile padding is at zero let's go ahead and set this to 20 for now and I would like to show you and I'm gonna click apply and I'm gonna zoom in and you'll see basically what that 20 means is that it has a minimum threshold of 20 pixels in between. Or maybe it's 20 units, but I, I think it's pixels. I'm pretty sure it's pixels. Um, in between, because the, the texture map size, 1024, that's in pixel size. Um, now, if I change this to zero, it's going to have zero uh, pixels in between. So they can touch, but only exactly at that point. So let's go ahead and try that again and click apply. And you'll notice how much closer they get to each other. Um, personally, I like to have a little space in between them. Um, in certain cases, I may change it, but you can get uh, maybe a little bit closer. And now they're going to have a minimum five pixels. Looks pretty good in this in this scenario. And um, you'll notice. Now I'll close this, and that's tool uh, modify layout right there you'll notice um, the, sh the squares look really big right now but in order to just verify double check you can always just scale this large real quick and I just want to show you you'll notice all of the squares are basically all the same exact size and that really helps especially with um, uh, uh, what do you call it uh, pixel information it's not going to be distorted or any way shape or form and it's and it's really 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 super useful just so um, you're aware um, in the face it does get a little strange from the neck to the face because it's such a rounded out section but there's really not much you can do about it um, and then at that point I'm just gonna undo it just to bring it back to the same size and then I'm gonna unwrap these eyes also I'm going to shift I. Um, 
I'm actually just gonna do one, and then I'm gonna, uh, I'll flip it, and we'll see. We'll see how how it goes. Um, so I'm just gonna start. I'll start with this one. Press one on my keyboard. This one as well. And I'm gonna just go right in here. Select here, and. UV camera based. Also going to do it right here. And UV camera based. And then I should easily be able to. So, even though I was unwrapping this, the scale was at negative one, so I was wondering why it was red. It shouldn't be red. Now, when you scale it at negative one, it basically sort of, when it flips itself over, it inverts itself, and it inverts the normals also. So what you can do is, um, this might work, modify, freeze transformations, and you'll see they turn blue. Um, so that's the best way to do it. Now I'm gonna go to Tools, Move UV Shell Tool, I'm going to select, uh, I'm actually select the arrow tool. And in fact, before I even do that, let's see where the seam is. Mm, no. So I'm going to select my arrow tool. I'm going to go to face. I'm going to highlight this entire thing. I'm going to hold space bar. I'm going to go UV camera based. And I'm going to go Tools, Move UV Shell Tool. I'm going to select on it. And I'm going to start by going Unfold. And I get a really, really strange unfold. So that's not going to work. All right. So I'm going to undo that. And I'm going to instead, I'm going to hold Spacebar, UV. And I'm going to do Cylindrical. Now this is gonna give me a better unwrap in this case. And this, I just wanted to show you what the uh, camera base would look like in comparison to the cylindrical unwrap. And the reason um, the camera base won't work is because it's a sphere and it just, it doesn't turn out the way you, it doesn't turn out well, right? So in this case, when you do the cylindrical unwrap, it creates this seam right in the back and right off the bat, I'm just gonna select this edge and select this edge because I know you'll notice, you'll see up here. And in fact, I'll just show you real quick. I'll unfold it and you'll see that it's not connected, right? So I can do it in two places. It shows you in the UV shell on the white bold seam line, which is really awesome because you used to have to just eyeball it um, or because the seam wasn't there or um, you could select it in here. Um, and then I'm just gonna go tools, uh, or cut sew, and move and sew. And then tools, move UV shell tool, select it, and click unfold. And then same thing here, unfold. And that should work pretty well. So now we've got the eye unwrapped. Um, we can also highlight it all and go to layout, modify, layout and it'll just lay it right out for us and then again you can do this entire thing right and just unwrap the whole thing again or we'll take a shortcut and we're gonna go panels we're gonna go to the four viewport all right cool and it's already on the dead center uh, my pivot point it's already in the center so I'm just gonna duplicate this scale at negative one and then right now I'm gonna go to modify and before I even do that let me show you panels saved layouts persp UV editor before I even do that you'll see it's blue but it's scaled at negative one 
Now, we will definitely have to freeze transformations on these eyes, so don't just leave it with the negative one. Freeze transformations. So modify, freeze transformations. Now it's red, right? But like before, it flipped from red to blue. Now it flipped from blue to red. So how do we fix that? We're just going to go to Tools, Move UV Shell Tool. We're going to select it. And then we're going to go to uh, Modify and Flip. And there you go. And you could even run a Modify Layout again just to see if it changes anything. So um, anyway, that's that. And uh, we have each eye on its own UV shell tool or on its own UV shell um, or UV map, excuse me, um, which is totally fine. Uh, we're gonna just leave it like that for now um, because it'll be easier for probably all of you to um, understand and it'll just be a little bit more work. Um, but for, I'm gonna continue on this video. Basically all you need to do is just submit your Maya file um, with your UVs um, you can also submit a uh, screenshot of your character mesh with your UV shells over here, but um, to be on the safe side, and, and I'd also recommend edit, delete all by type and uh, history. Um, and what was I saying? Oh, I would just, to be on the safe side, submit your Maya file. Um, but your character should look something like this all unwrapped nice and cleanly so we get a really clean uh, character uh, when we begin to actually texture the character um, and this is really 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 good to know uh, especially if you really want to get into 3d modeling heavily uh, texturing if it's something you're looking to do as a uh, sort of a future career UV mapping um, texturing extremely important um, things to know how to do properly um, extremely extremely important so um, now that that's all said and done I'll show you one last thing you can do and um, we will separate this later but um, just for now um, because you it, let's just say for especially for like a video game purpose right you know you're not gonna have each eye have its own texture map um, it's just uh, not a priority of the it's not a uh, how do I say it? Uh, an efficient way for you the, the the game engine to sort of uh, run well so having extra maps on your character that are not needed like in this case you don't need a full texture map for a character so what you can do um, this does get a little trickier, but you can select these and then you can do a um, combine. This is really the fastest way to do it. Um, combine and then go to tools, move UV shell tools, select everything on there and then do again, modify, layout. And now your eyes are going to be in there as well. Now a little little trick uh, to know is that um, because the eyes are uh, not really blending in with the rest of the character mesh, they're sort of on their own sort of unique thing. These ones you can actually pull out of scale and make them larger, but you can still keep them on the same map. So um, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to find the, there we go. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab this one, but you do wanna keep these parts. Scaled uniformly. So these are really, really tiny and they're not gonna actually look great in this particular case. Um, and then also we're gonna go tools, move UV shell tool. Okay. Now if it's possible, you can always do it this way um, and kind of scale them larger and find places 
where they'll fit. So specifically the eyeballs. Now you want to scale these uniformly, but honestly, you, I'll show you in a second. They don't have to be. Uh, I'm going to start with just tools, OUV shell tool. Start with just one and kind of place this in to an appropriate. Ah. section. Hopefully I'll be able to fit both of them in somewhere. And I might have to scale them a little bit smaller if I can't fit them anywhere. And you can also always move things around as needed. However, um, And the eyes are the only thing that you can really do this with. So here, I'm just going to slide this over a little bit. There we go. And then here, I need to find another place for this one. And I might have to just start to shift things around in order for this to fit properly. I just want the one. Tools, maybe shell tool. So like this will be a good spot for this one. I believe, let's see. Yeah, perfect. And then the eyes, I can actually even make larger too. Maybe not that large, but as large as possible in order for them to fit in the map. So I feel like I can bring this up a little bit more. And then I'll put this one here, this one here, and then this one. Just really anywhere you can kind of find places to fit. That'll work. And that'll work. So I've just basically, um, I've increased the size of the eyes. And I know I didn't keep the pupil and the color um, scaled proportionately to all, all one another. I mean, ideally that'd be great, but um, the eyes do have that sharp sort of uh, section where um, this will work perfectly fine and this is where I'll include uh, the coloration of my eye. And this particular section is where I want to have a higher resolution. Um, it doesn't need to be on its own map, maybe for like a CGI film or something, you know, AAA, high quality, you know, Pixar film, these might be, more than likely they're gonna be on their own texture maps, but, um, in this case, you know, for you know, gaming purposes and stuff like that, this is one way to do it. So, um, I just wanted to go ahead and show you how uh, it would be more efficient uh, for gaming in this particular case. All right, and that is unwrapping the character. And in the next one, uh, we're gonna get into texturing. So, uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. It's uh, I can't really stress enough how important this uh, is to any type of modeling, texturing, etc. in the 3D world. Um, so I hope you enjoyed this video um, and stay tuned for the next one. Thank you so much. And if you have any questions, shoot me a message.